All right, so the other week, uh, I had a couple of friends in this church who, who came up to me and they said, listen, we want to stop by your house afterwards and, and we want to do a wellness check. And this wellness check was to check on me, which I really appreciate. Us pastors need people checking on us. They said, you didn't look, look so great the other day. What's going on? And, uh, you know, you look ugly, but you look really ugly now. What's your problem? <laughs> um, they didn't say that. But anyway, it was a wellness check. And we, it was good. It was just good to have conversation and to talk about some things and to, to be able to work through some stuff. And it, it, it helped me. They didn't tell me whether I passed the wellness check or not, but they came and they helped me. And um, by the way, I'm believing with all my heart that at Castle Church, we are going to see Jesus break these bonds of mental affliction and the mental illnesses and the anxieties and the stresses and, the, and all the, the burdens that people are carrying because this city in particular, that's one of its marks. Can we believe together that God's going to change that story and get people in their right mind? You know, I believe our thoughts are going to come under captivity. I believe depression will flee. I'm saying that from this platform as clearly as I possibly can. I just started teaching again uh, my class at Three Rivers, a journalism class, and breaking the ice. I said, how many of you are already stressed? And that broke the ice because almost all the hands went up and said, I am incredibly stressed. People are dealing with a lot of, lot of stress. Isn't that true? I'm just taking a moment right here. I'm just telling you, I, I know that God wants to break and lift depression. It's not the way that we have to live. Everybody say amen to that. We don't have to live depressed. We don't have to live always stressed. We don't always have to live with anxieties. We're going to have our moments, but God is so good. How many of us know that God has picked us up when we've been down? He has brought us out of some stuff where in our minds we were battling against some stuff, but God came in with his word and he put our minds in right order. It is so easy for it to cascade our thoughts to kind of spill over into something and you start going into a place where you're trying to control your thoughts, control your thoughts, and you're doing everything you know how. But you know what? Sometimes you need supernatural and I would say the foundation should be supernatural where Jesus gives us a peace that passes understanding. So wellness check, which I really appreciated. And I would suggest that in your own lives, take the time to have spiritual conversations with one another. Uh, find some people. Talk to them. Just say, how you doing? You don't have to get all weirdly spiritual and, and over the top and God gave me a word for you. Like if you, God gave you a word, I'm not holding you back. But I'm just saying, sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is just check in with somebody. Say, hey, come over for a cup of coffee or can we just talk? No, no judgment. Just I want to be real with you. Can you be real with me? And can we talk? Hands up if you know that's a good idea. I got I to gotta know I got the church listening. So it is so important. We feel so isolated at times. We feel so... Uh, put off. The devil, by the way, the way I read the scripture, because the Bible says the lion, uh, he's like a lion who seeks, he prowls to seek and destroy us. So the way I read that is he's one step ahead of us. If you, if you look at uh, like a National Geographic thing, the lion already knows what prey he's looking for. So he already knows our weaknesses, but he might be one move ahead of us. But how many of us know that Jesus already has the final move? He already won. He's already got the victory. He's already two moves, three moves. He's an eternity ahead of the enemy. So we want to walk with Christ. We want to get deeper in our relationship in 2020. We want to know him more. I want to know him more. I surrender, right? We just sang a song where we crowned him king. We said, you are the king. I'm surrendering to you. So my message to you today, having said all that, is a wellness check. A wellness check on four issues not necessarily connected. I'm going to hit these four topics, and let's check to see your Christian health, okay? Can we do that together? I'm going to do these four things, and I want to see where you're at in your, in your Christian health, because we should live healthy Christian lives. One of the things I say often uh, in this church is we should insist on our freedom, amen? We get freedom in Christ. Don't just give it away. Don't trade your freedom for something else that puts you back in bondage. I've been set free. What Jesus did on the cross and he shed his blood, that was nothing short of a miracle. 
that was nothing short of the greatest moment of my life was to find Jesus and to have a relationship with him. He set me free. Other people have tried to impose religious rules on me. Other people have tried to control me. Myself, I've done my own damage. But in the end, I want to insist, no, I am free. I do not have to live that way. I can walk with life and life abundantly. Amen. Life and life abundantly. Who, if ever, anybody ever gave you the example that the Christian life is a head down Christian life and hopefully I scrape into heaven at the end of it all, they're not giving you the real message because the real message is your head's up. Burdens come on you, but you put them back on God and you say, I know that Jesus Christ is with me. Amen. I know where I'm going. How many of us know where we're going? We're going to be spending our eternity with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. No more deception, no more backstabbing, no more sin, no more fear, no more dread. How amazing is that going to be? Where we have interactions as people, and we're just so transparent because we're walking in the light, in the light of Christ. And Jesus is bringing us uh, his, 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 there's no sin there. There's no way to, be, to have sin because God is present and it banishes the sin. And we're going to be with him forever and ever. So I have a wellness check for you because I believe that we should live healthy lives. So these are four different topics I want to bring up to you in no particular order. The first one is, we can pop the verses up. Don't let the worst in someone else bring out the worst in you. Can we all say amen to that? This is just one topic you say, well, what, what's, this is on my heart. So I'm going to just share it with you on my heart. Don't let the worst in someone else bring out the worst in you as a Christian. All right? A couple of scriptures. Uh, the first one, Galatians chapter 16, 1. Is that the first one up there? Yeah. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. By the way, one of our values at Castle Church is we will lead with gentleness and boldness. I'm not ashamed to say that leadership should have the quality of gentleness. It's a lost trait in leadership, but it should be gentle, understanding our own frame. It says, keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Man, how many of us know it's so easy to spot what's wrong with other people before you spot what's wrong with you? That's unhealthy. How many of us know sometimes you hear somebody talk and they're talking about, man, they, they kind of judge somebody else and they're going through what they judge on someone else and you listen to them talk and be like, brother, you're the same person. <laughs> You're the same person you just talked about with the other person because we often can identify things we don't like about other people, but we don't see it in ourselves. Don't let the worst in other people bring out the worst in you. You know, I'm telling you as a church, I want to bring you into the word, okay? We lean into the word a little bit. Please don't harden your heart in this life. Just because we go through this life where people hurt you, and they disappoint you, and they let you down, doesn't give us the excuse to harden our hearts and begin to think we're better than other people. Because there isn't anyone here that's better than another human being. Amen. Amen. Not one of us. Not one of us that says, keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Watch yourself. Sometimes the worst in somebody else is a magnification of what could be the worst in you. Sometimes when you see someone else going through something, it's an example of what could be taking place in your heart. And that's why the Bible says, lest you too be tempted. You got to know the state of your heart. As a pastor, I deal with a lot of people who have brokenness. I shouldn't be surprised by brokenness because I too am broken. Amen? And so when we deal with people who let us down, we can have an attitude that's not gentle. can have an attitude that says, I'm angry. And by the way, there's a good anger. Like we should be angry at abuse. We should be angry at injustice. There's good righteous anger. 
But there's not the kind of anger that leads to bitterness when you go to bed at night and you wake up in the morning and all you can think about is how much you dislike a person. And that is different. Am I preaching to you guys? Are you hearing me? Does anybody deal with difficult people in their lives? You got some difficult people, maybe in, in your family, maybe in your job, maybe in the mirror. <laughs> We have difficulties in our own lives. And sometimes you could be dealing with somebody and you say, they're a liar. But if you were really dealing with somebody and you looked at your own heart, you would say, but I too have lied. Mm -hmm. Or you can look at somebody and say, well, I can't believe that they did this thing. And Jesus is saying to us, you know what, but keep watch on yourself. Show me the next scripture. We're doing a wellness check on this. It's in Daniel chapter 9, verses 8 to 9. To us, O Lord, belongs open shame. Okay, so Daniel is a man of God in the Old Testament. The Bible's got two big old sections, old and new. And in the Old Testament, there's a man named Daniel who is standing in the gap on behalf of his country because his nation has really fallen away from God. Daniel, the Bible doesn't record any known sin in his life. There's nothing in the scripture that says Daniel's a mess. But Daniel, who is revered as a holy man, watch, watch a key word in all this. To us, O Lord, belongs open shame. To our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because, what's that word? We. Everybody say we. we. Have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him. What was that word again? We. We. Sometimes the worst in other people is just another reminder that this world is full of sin. Amen? Amen. And I'm telling you, church, you go through this life. The Bible says, I'm sent, Jesus says, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. It's not going to always be easy when you're a Christian. You're going to come up against people whose agenda is against yours and wants to take you out. But... The worst in other people shouldn't bring out the worst in us. I am telling you in your wellness check today, how are you responding to the worst in other people right now? And you can say, I have every right to hate that person, to not like that person, to fight against that person, to really rip into that person. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says, we by the Holy Spirit have the power of Jesus Christ in us that no matter how people treat us, we can act humbly. Amen? We can forgive. Everybody say the word forgive. forgive. Oh, man. Change the world with the word forgiveness. That's at the center of Christianity because how many of us know that Jesus forgave our sins? And anything apart from Christ, if I had never given my life to Jesus, but I, I won a Nobel Peace Prize, but I fill in the blank, and I was that guy, but I never surrendered to the King of Kings, I would not be spending eternity with him, because there is no goodness in me. And so I'm trying to show you, church, today, that by the power of Jesus Christ living in you, no matter what other people are like, you can still maintain your character and your integrity and a gentleness because of your love for God. How many people want that to be true about your life? Let's put our hands up. Amen? Wellness check. I want you to think about that in your own life. Can I change the topic? Change the topic real quick. When you're seeking God... When you're seeking God's plan, look for the narrow path. I want to I talk to you about this wellness check. I hear so many times people talk about what is the will of God for my life. I'm confused. I don't know what to do next. And I want to know what he, what he has for me. And, and it's really good questions. And sometimes we do come across some very difficult life decisions. So many people here in this place are confronting some difficult life decisions. But you know what the real question underneath it all that Jesus wants us to get to, to get to a point where it's not just what, special thing am I supposed to do in this earth but am I willing to walk down a narrow path a lot of confusion rises up because we're not willing to walk a narrow path can we uh, go to that scripture it's in Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 to 14 enter this is Jesus enter by the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction and those who enter by it are many, 
For the gate is narrow. I'm, gonna, I'm getting you to respond today. Everybody say narrow. narrow. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. The will of God is not a popularity contest. Amen? Amen. The will of God is not a popularity contest. The will of God is more than just what everybody else thinks about your life. The will of God is supposed to be something where it's not about how many people approve. It's not about how many people approve. God shows you something. Come on, church, listen to me. God shows you something to do. Sometimes he's going to take you down a narrow path that no one else can go with. It's at the narrow end of a narrow path. It's at the very point. And sometimes you, you're huddling up with a lot of people and you're trying to bring them forward. And you try to bring them forward and you get to a point where it's so crowded and you just got one little gap. And Jesus will often bring you there in his relationship with him where he just wants you to say, okay, the will of God is right now, could you take the next step forward no matter who approves in your life? And everybody said amen. amen. It's a narrow path. Don't give it up for the wide way. Don't give it up for all the approval. Don't give it up for the majority rules. Don't give it up for uh, always getting approval and, and trying to seek what everybody else says is okay and all this and that because a lot of times the person next to you is just as confused as you. And God draws us into this relationship of a narrow path. And if you want to live a healthy Christian life, you don't just give in to the worst of other people. You also are committed to walking a straight, narrow path. Everybody else gets to do that, someone might say. Everyone else gets to do what they want to do. Everyone else gets to just live it up. Everyone else gets to fill in the blank. Lord, why are you bringing me to this place? Why do I have to go down this path? But as you go down this path, you will find and you will discover the incredible, wonderful grace of God. You can't live this Christian life and just stay comfortable your whole life. Amen? Amen? If you want to live a healthy life, you've got to understand that how God wants to work in you. It's not a majority vote. It's not a popularity contest. It's God will my life please you. And that is so important to living a healthy Christian life. So many of us are wondering what the next person's doing. Just like the disciples. The disciples had this conversation with Peter and Jesus. And, and this is after the resurrection. And, and Peter is hearing from Jesus that he's going to go down a narrow path of suffering. And Peter says, but what about all these disciples? Why don't they got to do with, I don't want to be the only one suffering. And Jesus says to him, you don't worry about them. You worry right now about me and you. Right now, what you, some of you need to do is stop worrying about other people and worry about your own relationship with Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's, that's a wellness check for you. That's a wellness check. If you've got too many people you're trying to uh, approve, get approval from, you're probably not taking the next step. I got a third one for you. You guys following me on this? Yeah. All right, the third one. Behind the scenes is so much more important than out in front. Amen. Another wellness check for you. If you want to live a healthy Christian life, what you do behind the scenes is so much more important than what you're doing out in front. Let's read the scripture together so you can believe it ain't just my words. We're going to Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 to 14. Can we put that up? Oh, we have it? All right. I have the wrong verse. I think Matthew 6, 1 to 3. Thank you. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Amen. And so that is, if you want to live a healthy Christian life, it can't be a life where you want everybody to see how good you are, right? Um, somebody pointed out to me a message by Stephen Furtick, and Stephen Furtick was having this profound thought. He's like, listen, in this world, we're all projecting. I'm projecting the best image of me. 
You're projecting the best image of you, and we're just projecting this best image of each other. But you know what? Sometimes that's a lot of falseness in there, right? Sometimes there's a lot of stuff in there that just might look good, look healthy, but like this video that Jono showed, it's not about looking healthy, it's about actually being healthy. And so that's why Jesus over and over again in the scriptures to live a healthy Christian life puts a premium on the type of living you do when no one else looks. When you close the door in your prayer life, okay, and you're not giving a big public prayer like the hypocrites do. Uh, By the way, we do want to let our light shine. Yes, let our light shine. Let people know you're a Christian. That's not the same thing as saying do what you do with God and make sure that who you are in private is who you are in public. You know, it's so weird how the more religious people can be, the louder they get. (laughs) Anybody, you understand what I'm saying? It can have like this obnoxious tone on it. And you're just like, all right, I heard what you said for the 20th time about how you just read the Bible. But I don't know. I don't know what it is that you come across. But I'm saying that sometimes the people who don't really have God in their lives in private are the loudest people. Because it's a show. And if you want to live a healthy Christian life, I've said this so many times. But I want to teach you. I want, I want you to step into that relationship with Jesus Probably the best relationship you can have with Jesus is when no one's looking and you're just driving down and no one sees how you're worshiping. Amen? How you're just being real with God. And how you're doing your ugly praying, right? We talked about ugly praying. And, and, you're, and you're sad and you're down, and, but you're just telling them everything. And as you do that, God wants us to be authentic. Everybody say authentic. Genuine real, and that's something all of us could probably, me too, catch up with. What we say with what we do, what we project with who we are, what we want to be known as with what God knows us to be. God knows us intimately all the time, no hiding, and that's why the best moments I have with God is just the realest ones where I say, Lord, here I am. I made a mess. Here I am. I'm broken. Here I am. Search me. Know me. What do I got in me that's got to come out? Dangerous prayers. People want to pray some dangerous prayers in this church? 2020 and take the next step. Amen? Amen. It's about being genuine with God. I believe he values it so much. And that one day we're going to be in heaven and the people that we're shouting the most. I'm not sure if, where that's going to fit in with the people who were just washing feet and suffering with other people. Come on. None of us are going to wake up in the morning and say, okay, how can I suffer for Jesus? But when we face suffering, we humble ourselves. We are gentle in private. We allow these trials to shape us, to make us more like Jesus. And I know that I believe in this church that there are so many people here who just want to be more like Jesus. Amen? Amen. The one who gave us life. And he knows. That was wellness check number three. Wellness check. I could stop on any one of those and preach a long time. But I'm just trying to get you guys to check your own pulse. Everybody checking your own pulse? How's your health? You taking a look? You feeling where you're breathing? Where you might need to uh, shake things up a little bit? Fourth one. This is, you could put up Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. I'm borrowing this from a friend who texted it to me. I said, can I use this? Do I have to pay you anything? He said, yes, get me some cookies. <laughs> so if you're in my circle, you know who that would be. <laughs> but he, he pointed something out that's really stuck with me. I could have the musicians come forward, or we're going to sing this. What are we going to do? We're going to do the background. Are you just going to play that? So this is a fourth wellness check. If we want to live a healthy Christian life, right? We want to live a healthy Christian life. Can we all say amen to that? Amen. We're not going to let the worst in someone else bring out the worst in us. We're going to be gentle and humble. When we are seeking God's will, we're going to also look for the narrow path. When we live our lives, we're going to put a premium on behind the scenes more than out in front. And the fourth thing is, I want to say, don't normalize the miracle. 
Don't make what God says is a miracle and call it normal. What do we mean by that? How many of us feel like we've arrived already <laughs> and our lives are all figured out? None of us. None of us. But how many of us know that God's been working in our hearts? And maybe the thing that you keep saying is normal is really the miracle. The miracle that you're here, that you're breathing, that you came to church again, that you're ready to face this world again, even if it's a narrow path I'm going through. This is what I want to do with my life. How many of us are willing to commit in our lives as Christians that it's not going to be an out in front type stuff, but you're willing to go behind the scenes and say, Lord, right here, just you and I, I want to have a more intimate relationship with you. If that's your desire, you just put your hand up and say, God, this is part of my prayer, part of my prayer, part of my prayer. Praise God. I'm going to pray for us. Anybody else off topic? Somebody needs healing, put your hand up. Say, Lord, I need healing. Please touch me. If you are suffering with depression, you want to keep in that battle, put your hand up. Say, God, please deliver me. If there is a mental affliction in your life and you know you need Jesus to bring you peace, put your hand up. We're going to pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you just as we are. We thank you that there is power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that breaks the chains. We yield our lives to you. Father, I pray for those who are sick that you would heal them. I pray for those who are afflicted that you would deliver them. I pray for those of us who are kind of dancing around the outsides of Christianity that we would take a step today closer to that narrow path, coming across that line, to say, here I am, in Jesus' name.